Today, we're on the Baltic coast in Germany's far north, in Travemünde, part of the city of Lübeck. One local landmark is the lighthouse. You can enjoy the view from the top, but you can't spend the night here. In return, from up here, you get a wonderful view of the city, the Baltic Sea, and Travemünde's second most important landmark, the MS Passat, a magnificent old schooner which is now both a museum and a hotel. Tonight, I'm going to sleep in a cabin here, rocking gently on the water. The Passat is a bark with four masts. At the start of the 20th century, it was regarded as extremely modern. Built in 1911 to transport freight between Europe and South America, it was later used as a training vessel for young sailors. One of them was Walter Düring. In the mid-1950s, Düring worked as a seaman and carpenter. The 75-year-old has spent many nights on board the Passat. He's eager to give a tour of the floating hotel. First stop is the wheel. Bye. Düring says that in bad weather, it took at least four men to hold the boat on course, and they had to put some muscle into it. In good weather, one man could manage alone. Managing the anchors also involved hard work. They and their chains weighed 42 tons. It took up to 16 men to haul them in using this winch. When the entire 270 meters of chain was overboard, it could take four hours to haul in the anchor. Wow, today people go to the gym. We didn't need any of that. The Passat has room for more than 100 guests. The cabins are small and simple, the beds just 70 meters wide and not very long. But for those seeking comfort, there are larger cabins. Take the Passat Suite, for example. It was newly built two years ago and costs around 100 euros a night. It's a favorite with newlyweds, as you can also get married on the ship. So my mind is made up. I'm going to sleep in the Passat Suite tonight. But first, the tour continues. The Passat's cargo was stored here in the ship's belly. It was mostly made up of saltpeter and grain. The sacks had to be carefully stacked. Shifting freight could throw the whole ship off balance. A journey on the Passat was a physically taxing job. Sailors could be at sea for up to eight months. Trips around Cape Horn and South America were particularly harsh. The area is famous for its bad weather. Every last man had to pitch in. But today, visitors to this ship can count on staying dry. It's impressive. For me as a landlubber, it's an uplifting feeling to be on such a big ship. Meals were prepared here in the galley. There was just one cook for all 80 men. There wasn't much variety in the menu. It usually consisted of salted meat, potatoes and canned vegetables. Live animals were taken on long journeys as provisions. They had cages, but they were often allowed to walk around on deck. They didn't have fridges back then? No, there was no electricity on board. So you couldn't freeze meat? You had to take it with you alive? Today, it's the same ship, but a completely different world. The captain had a salon. Here, he entertained important business people or politicians. It still has its original furniture from 1911. It's evening. The Passat is moored next to a picturesque beach. A nice way to end the day. And now, it's time for bed. But the ship is surprisingly quiet tonight, accommodating only one guest, our Euromax reporter. Good night and plain sailing. The dawn of a new day. But there's one downside to staying on the ship. It doesn't serve breakfast. 
you have to go on land for that. And that's where you'll find snacks typical to the region. A fish roll. It's an unusual way to start the day, but for some, it's not bad. My conclusion, the Passat is a beautiful ship with a fascinating past. Spending a night in one of the cabins isn't very luxurious, but there's lots of maritime flair. If you want a bit more comfort, you should definitely book the suite in advance. The Passat is no longer seaworthy. The ship is permanently moored in Travemunde. Unlike our reporter, who's already on her way to the next hotel.